Hi, I'm Adam Snow of the USPA Certified Polo Instructors Program. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the proper use of artificial aids, namely the whip and spurs. I'll begin with the spurs. I like to place my spurs mid-level on the heel of my boot, as you can see here. And essentially I'm using the spur as an amplification of my leg. I don't even use it that much, even though I wear them for during games. Um, I'll first ask with, if I want to step off to the left, I'll ask with just a little jiggle of my right leg, maybe my left hand moving in the direction I want and my eyes looking there. And that would look something like this. If she didn't move off with that, with that aid, and I'll use the left leg now, then I would twist my, my toe out slightly and ask with a little bit of spur close to underneath her girth um, or underneath my hip, let's say. It's very important to keep your heels roughly under your hips and to only use the spur in this zone from the girth back about eight, 10 inches. We don't wanna have the spur back on the flanks. We can cut them there. And it's really something that when you ask subtly first, then you can bring up the volume of your ask by twisting your leg out and using that spur to have her move off quickly. So think about the spur as sort of an additional ask if your leg is not providing enough emphasis on what you're asking or the mare or gelding or stallion is not responding to your, to your leg request. As far as the whip goes, obviously when we're playing, we're carrying it in our left hand. I like to have a whip with a strap on it. And the way that I think about the whip um, is this mare is quiet. When I want her life to come up and maybe I don't wanna be you know, flapping with my legs a whole lot, I just may give her just a slight flick on the shoulder, which is sort of like a, hey, let's get ready. We're about to do something here. Wake up and be on your toes. And that's something I use like going into a lineup. Um, if I'm schooling a horse and I want them to get, to get their life up a little bit. But this is a very subtle motion. It's just right here on her shoulder. Can you show them her, your shoulder? Right here, it's not moving the hand a, a lot. So these reins are not flapping. And it's just like a very slight, like, all right, wake up, we got to throw in here. Let's be alive. And that's kind of the idea. It can also work if you just need a little bit of extra forward impulsion to win a bump, um, to beat a player to the ball. And it's just a little tick, tick, tick. You see the life come up in her right there. Now, I see some beginner, beginning players um, trying to do the shoulder flick but doing their whole reins and body like that, that is a no-no. You're moving, you're messing with the horse's mouth. You're not having a calm upper body when you're riding. If you really need that much forward impulsion and that much run, then what we need to do is grab the reins with the mallet hand in the right hand, like either with my mallet down like this or with my mallet up like this. It's not essential that we come in and separate the reins when we grab it with our right hand. A lot of times I know I'm just grabbing the whole bundle. One pop I feel like is enough to get the reaction that I want for that burst of speed. And then I'll come back with my left hand and either just, so if it's here, pop, and back here, and then I'll worry about separating them individually when I have time, okay? So if I just am wanting to move around here in space, I'm probably not using, I probably don't need to amplify my aids that much with this mare. But if I did, I would roll my calf onto the horse, use the spur a little, or on this left side, I would give her a little flick on the shoulder to say, hey, pay attention.
if I were schooling this mare, I wouldn't have my mallet. So I'll just sit on it for a moment. And then if I wanted to move her off to the left and I need a little extra tap with the whip or I'm working on her neck reining or moving away from pressure, I could just switch it over to my right hand. And sometimes just by them knowing I'm holding a whip in my right hand, they'll know to move off of that and I don't even need to use it. And the same goes for spurs. I believe in good horsemanship, we should always go for subtlety first. So when your horse is responsive to your subtle, quiet aids without spurs and whip, that's ideal. When you need to amplify it, um, you can bring in those use of the artificial aids. Just be careful. Never hit the horse in the head with the whip or the mallet. Never hit your horse with the mallet on any part of the body. And I like to think it, of it not as even hitting a horse with the whip, but asking. We're asking for something that they're not giving us without the use of these artificial aids. Remember that the horse is a very sensi sensitive animal. You know, they weigh roughly a thousand pounds. You see them in a pasture and a little mosquito lands on, their, lands on them and they're shaking all over. So let's try to go for subtlety first when we're using artificial aids. And um, when the horse can respond to our subtle pressure and ask, those are the really good horses. Now, some of them need need those cues on occasion as reminders to bring the energy up to get them ready to possibly win a play for particularly a horse that you know is waiting to stop or is on the lazy side if i if i was going to try to win a special ride off or get to the ball first to score the overtime goal and i was going away from you that one pop might look something like this So I think you may have been able to see the difference in her energy and her speed and her commitment to going forward. I mean, ideally we want these animals ready to run and ready to stop. And the artificial aids are something that can help us achieve that goal. But please don't abuse them. Don't overuse them. They're an additional help for us as a rider and polo players. And I hope this can benefit you in your quest of becoming better horse people, better polo players and um, proper use of the artificial aids. I'm Adam Snow with the USPA Certified Polo Instructors Program. Play safe, play smart, play polo.